guys. Um, so I noticed that the last video I made on masks, which was a basic Joanne Fabrics um, face mask, got a lot of views. So I want to show you how I made this mask, which is a little bit more advanced than that last basic one. Um, it gives you a few more features and that you may be looking for and it definitely fits a little bit more snug across your face. Um, so some of the features of this mask versus the, the other video I made, this one has pleats on the front. Um, they do open up um, to cover your mouth, so that's good. Um, it has a nose guard up here, um, so you can conform that around your nose. If you flip it on the back, it has a filter pocket, and at the end of the video, I'll talk about what filters I suggest. Um, so this is a, a very basic mask, a, a little, it takes a little longer to make than the other one, um, but I will show you all the steps. Um, so why don't we go ahead and get started. So first we're gonna cut our fabric, and we're gonna I have a piece here that I've cut. And these cutting mats work great if you're doing a lot of sewing and cutting. Um, so you're gonna cut your mask um, 15 inches long and seven, in seven and a half inches wide. So you see the seven and a half here, and it's okay if you fudge slightly and the 15 here. Now keep in mind your pattern needs to be going up and down. So if you get a piece of fabric where the pattern, um, where it's a set pattern that you have to choose, remember to have your pattern going up and down. This particular fabric here is one that it doesn't matter. Um, it goes either way. But if you get something more that is like this Harry Potter fabric here, which is the Marauder's Map. Oops. Gave you a little spill. Um, if you get a piece of fabric here, that's the Marauder's Map, then this one definitely you don't want the pattern uh, running the wrong way. So you're going to make sure you cut it up and down. The other thing to remember is once we get done with this first one, you're going to be able to see how the pattern shifts. Um, so if, you're, if you want your picture in the center, if it's a, if it's a piece of fabric that has a one um, main focal point, um, just know that the center of your fabric is actually going to be slightly shifted upwards. Um, so you don't want to put it in the dead center right there at the seven and a half inch mark. You're going to want to shift it based on, based on your pattern. So um, keep that in mind. So I'm going to take this fabric that I've already cut and I'm going to fold it in half. And so you'll notice there's a right side and a wrong side to the fabric. Wrong side is that dull side. Right side is the colorful one. I'm going to take it. I'm going to fold it in half here. Now you can pin that if you're new to sewing and you're concerned about how you're going to line all that up. And you can go ahead and stick two quick pins in the edge. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna sew what's gonna actually become our filter pocket. So that's our first step. Um, I'm gonna sew about a quarter to a half inch down and I'm gonna sew about two inches in. Now, the from each side. So I'm gonna sew two inches in here and two inches in from here. And that's gonna leave a gap in the middle and that's what makes our filter pocket. And when I sew, I'm going to start, I'm going to do a little back stitch to kind of lock my stitch in place. I'm going to go to two inches and do a little back stitch again. Then I'm going to cut the thread and do the same thing from the other side. So let's take a look. So I've got my sewing machine here. Um, if you're not sure, you know, you don't really need to, we're kind of eyeballing it. So don't worry about that half inch to quarter inch. You can use your foot as the guide. So if you actually set it up on your foot, you can use the length of your foot um, from the edge of the fabric to where you're sewing your line. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna do a quick stitch. I'm gonna do a quick back stitch and take it backwards to lock that in place. I'm gonna go about two inches in. Um, again, we're just eyeballing it to leave enough room for that filter pocket. So that's side one. This stitch shouldn't take you too long. I'm gonna flip my fabric over, line up my foot again. Fabric's a little tucked under, there we go. And then I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna lock it in place, and I'm gonna come in again. See if we can get it zoomed in, there we go. I'm gonna come in again about two inches, and I'm gonna lock it in place. By doing a quick back stitch, and then back again. Okay, so now let's come back over here. So now we have it cut, we can go ahead and pull these pins out that we had in here, so my sewing pins. And now I have what's a filter pocket. Um, so the big thing here is we don't want our filter pocket on the top of our mask, right? So if we're sewing, this isn't how it's going to be. If you notice that the filter pocket on our sample is down a little bit. So the way to do that, so I'm going to put my fingers in both sides. And I'm just going to shimmy that filter pocket down just a little bit. There's no um, set firm place you need to put it. If you're like me and you do want a guide, um, about an inch is where I'm at right now. So now I have my filter pocket about an inch down off the top. So I'm going to take these 
the part that we created with those first stitches. And this is what creates your filter pocket. I'm gonna pull it back. And then we're actually gonna get our iron. And I will admit my iron is not plugged in because I would not be ironing on this plastic surface. Um, but if you have your iron, you're gonna run over this with this lip pushed backwards. And you're just gonna press that down. You're gonna press all the corners. You're gonna get all the corners on the bottom and the sides. And we're gonna make sure we press this lip down really well. So once we get that done, it's actually going to come out looking like this. So I've got one that I've already done. So you can see we've pressed it. It's got its filter pocket is right in there. That's the gap between the two sides where we sewed in. So our next step is to add the elastic. So that's pretty easy. Um, and that'll be what I show you next. But let's take a, a minute and talk about elastic. So in our last, in my last video, I cut the elastic at six, six inches. And I wanna stress that it really depends on the type of elastic you're using. Um, this particular elastic that I'm using today is really stretchy. Um, but I'm still gonna cut mine to actually six and a half to six and three quarters inches. The reason being is I made some masks last week and I used this black, um, I got some new black elastic in, and this isn't as stretchy. And so when I went to put the mask on, I made a few for myself, they were just too tight um, because this, this, was, this didn't have as much a give at six inches. So I'm actually cutting my black now to seven inches for adults. And this white has a little bit more give to it. So I'm cutting these at six and a half to six and three quarters. Now you want them to fit snug, but not loose. So it's important before you go and cut and and this is what I did. I cut a whole bunch of this in black. I, I probably cut a hundred masks worth. Um, so I, I committed to making them and then I made those children's masks instead um, because the distance obviously from their mouth to their ears is probably a little bit smaller than what an adult would be. So my suggestion for you, if you're new to this, is just make one mask at first, make a trial run mask, see, cut the length at about six and a half inches and just see how well that fits on you, on family members, and use that as your guide, um, just, a, just a test. So I cut mine and I used my board here and my rotary cutter. If you're gonna sew a lot, I really do suggest a map board like this because it's got the lines already on it, your measurement tools are already on it, and a rotary cutter like this. Um, it does help things go. So I take my, my elastic, I line it up using these one inch grids and I cut them to seven inches. So I've got, a, I've got some elastic here I've already cut. And so I've cut two pieces to seven inches. So you're gonna need two pieces. I take my fabric and I open it up and it's still with the wrong side, with the right side facing each other. And I just tuck my elastic in. So you see it here, I'm gonna tuck it in right here at the top just about a quarter of an inch from the edge. I'm gonna take a pin and I'm gonna pin it and I'm gonna pin it purposely going down like this. And the reason for that is I can easily pull it out while I'm sewing. Um, so now I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna feed so I can open up. This basically makes a little pocket. Now you wanna make sure it's straight that you haven't turned it or twisted it. And I'm gonna take this down here. I'm gonna put it in this side about a quarter of an inch in. I'm gonna turn it so I can pin it better. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my pin in here. So that's gonna hold the edge in place. And then you wanna kinda, of, you wanna tuck that in so you don't sew over it. And now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna do a stitch here and we're gonna go back over it a couple times. That's gonna hold the elastic in place. We're gonna stitch down this entire side, making sure that the elastic is tucked in and we are not running over it again. Um, and that can be tricky because we don't want to run over it again and lock it in place in the middle. And then we're going to come down here, make an L, stitch over that a few times. And that's what's going to put that in place. So I'm going to put my elastic on the other side. So we have piece number two. We're going to do the same thing to this side. We're going to tuck it in. We're going to add a pin to hold it in place. And then we're going to make sure it's not folded. And we're gonna put it in place here. So now we have our elastic done. If you're making these in batches, so this would be a point where I would get them all pinned before I um, sat down to my sewing machine because you can do this in front of the TV. I mean, do this while talking to other people in your family so you're not isolated in your sewing room. And I would get all of my fabric pinned once I know the length of elastic I'm gonna cut. And then just make a stack of these and then go over to my sewing machine. So now I'm gonna show you kind of what those look like.
Um, I'm not too sure if you really need to watch me sew, but I'll do one side and then I'll show you. So I pulled that out a little early because if your elastic is tight, um, you're not going to want to pull that out too early. You're actually going to leave it in there until you run over it. So let me show you how to do that and put that pin back in. Um, so if my elastic is shorter um, than my mask, sometimes this can be very taut. And so I make sure that I actually sew it in place before I remove the pin. So we have it. We've got my needle down. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna come forward. And you wanna be careful your pin doesn't get stuck under your sewing machine, because sometimes that will cause it to not move. I'm gonna go backwards, I'm gonna go forwards. I'm gonna go backwards one more time, and that locks it in place. Now I'm gonna lift my foot, and with the needle down, so you can see the needle still in the fabric, I'm gonna pivot my fabric, okay? Now I'm gonna open it up, because remember this is a pocket we're creating, and I'm gonna tuck that elastic, that extra elastic, all the way inside. Because when I run down this edge, I don't want the elastic to be caught in it. So I'm, not, I'm gonna I pivot. You can see my needle is still in it. I'm gonna put my foot back down. And I'm gonna run right here about the length of the side of the foot. So less than a quarter of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna come all the way down the side, all the way down to where this pin is. So I've come to the bottom. I might do a quick back stitch forward. Now with the needle down, I'm gonna lift my foot again. And I'm gonna pivot my fabric. So now I've pivoted. I put my foot back down. And I'm gonna carefully and slowly go over where the needle is, just so where the pin is, so the needle doesn't hit it. And then I'm gonna reverse. Once you've done it once, you can pull your pin out so you don't break your needle. I definitely have done that a few times. And I'm gonna come back over one or two more times just to lock that elastic in place. Okay, now I'm gonna take my needle out and clip. So that's one side of the fabric that's done, I've done here, and I've gone this side. So now I'm gonna do this other side and then I'll be right back with you. So I want to highlight, I am trying to use all the bit of my fabric. You'll notice that this has a frayed edge. That's okay, because we're going to tuck it inside. Um, so that is perfectly fine. You just want to keep your stitch on this side of that edge. So I've gone on the side. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to keep my needle in, lift my foot, pivot my fabric. I might have to move that head back of that. And then I'm going to come out. I'm holding my elastic in place with my finger since I pulled my pin. Just make sure you don't sew over your finger. It can be very painful. Okay, so we're going to go back. And I only came out as far as just enough to go over the elastic and back. Okay, so now let's cut that. All right, so now you've made a pocket. So it's completely closed on all sides. You're probably wondering now, how do I get to my mask? Because it's wrong side out. So as you can see, the wrong side's on every side. You're actually going to turn it inside out using the filter pocket. So the size of your filter pocket is important because it gives you enough room to turn it out. Um, if you get too close on the edges, that can be a little difficult. Um, you also need to be able to fit your filter back in. So some helpful tips that I've run across. Occasionally, I miss the Velcro. <laughs> and when I turn my um, mask inside out, one of these pieces of Velcro will just pop right out. Um, so I go ahead and turn it back in. Um, so the, the correct side is facing each other again. I go back a step. I use my finger, navigate the Velcro back in its spot, kind of pin it in place, and then I sew it um, one more time. So that's happened to me a few times. It's okay. Um, it's something really easy to fix. So now we're going to turn this right side out. We're going to pull each of the corners. The Velcro should be tight. Um, you can use that to help turn it because if you're just pulling on it, causes it to come out, you need to reattach it anyway. All right, so now our Velcro is actually on the inside and we've made this little pillow pocket. Um, our next step, so we only have two steps left at this point, so pretty simple. Um, I'm gonna put my nose piece in and then I'm gonna create my pleats and then I'm done. Um, so for the nose piece, I use pipe cleaner. I cut them to six inches and then I actually fold the ends in um, so that way they're not poking out, especially if you're gonna put this in the washing machine um, to wash it after a few times. Um, very similar for women out there to bras that have the under metal underwires. Eventually those poke through. So by turning this in, my hope is that'll keep that metal, um, the end of the pipe cleaner from poking through. So I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to again use this filter pocket as my access point. I'm going to stick my pipe cleaner up here. 
careful not to bend it too much or it'll be hard to sew. I'm gonna line it up here in the middle. I'm actually gonna turn it and I'm gonna pin it in place. So you wanna put a couple pins there because it can slide both directions. So I'm gonna pin here and now I'm gonna pin here. And I am going to run a stitch that's gonna come down here. It's gonna come across over here and come up and that's what's gonna hold that um, nose piece in place um, and keep it, you know, if you wash it and other things, keep it from really moving around too much. So you wanna make sure you get on both the sides. And you also wanna be careful that you know where this is when you're sewing it because if your needle hits, especially this larger part where you've actually folded it in, um, you're gonna break a needle. And I've broken a couple needles so far. So you definitely wanna be careful with that. So now um, knowing that keeping in mind your filter pocket is at the top, you're gonna pleat. And I am not the expert in pleating, so you can hold your judgment. <laughs> um, but I just take this and I fold it down um, once and then I'll get and I'll pin. So you come in here and you pin it to hold that pleat in place. Try to line it up on the other side and remember where how I did it. Um, so I'll pleat on this side, coming this way. And then I'll put one more pleat in here. So I'm gonna pleat here. And there's a stray thread I need to cut that I can get in a little bit. I'm not in a rush necessarily to grab that now. And I'll pleat, put my pleat on this side so it lines up. And there's um, tools you can get to help pleat. There's lots of different things out there. I just kind of eyeball it and use my hands. Um, so now I've got it ready to sew. So this will be a next stage that I'll do a whole bunch in. And um, so I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna sew around this. And I'm actually gonna keep going. So I'm not gonna stop here. I'm gonna come up a little. And then I'm gonna come down here and just sew that. And make one so around the edge. Um, keep in mind, you wanna make sure the straps are out of the way. If your strap is in and it gets pinned, you're just gonna sew it and then your mask isn't gonna work anymore. I've had to cut some of those out too. Um, so you're just gonna go, again, I start down here. I go ahead and grab all of this. I come down around my thing, my nose guard, I do this, and then I come back down. And that is how you make a mask. Um, so not too hard, um, not too, um, it does take some basic sewing, but after you get one or two done, you'll feel a lot more comfortable with them. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in the sewing machine, as you can see, and we're just gonna go around one time. And as long as you keep your, so I'm gonna pull my pins out a little bit so they're not directly in the way. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my needle down and I'm gonna keep my elastic out of the way. So I'm gonna come up and do a little lock stitch and go back. I'm gonna go up again. I'm gonna go a little slower over the pleat marks because um, sometimes that can be difficult for you, depending on your sewing machine, to get over those. And sometimes I do have to pull through on the other side to get over those pleats. I'm gonna guide it. Um, when you get here, you can leave the needle in, pull your foot up to angle. I'm gonna come up here, depending on how much of an angle you left. I'm gonna come here. Now I'm gonna go around. So I mentioned you want to be really careful with the edge of that. I'm going to go ahead and pull this top pin out, put my foot back down. Now I'm, I'm going under my nose guard. Just again, make sure you're holding it and pushing it up towards the top. Um, you can see it's still here, so that way I've sewed through them before, around them, I've, of every direction you can imagine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull that pin out, but they're on the inside. Really only you can tell where that mistake is. I'm gonna pivot, pull my head, foot up and pivot a little bit. I'm gonna pull my foot up again and pivot this way. I'm gonna pull these pins out so they don't run into the foot. And then I'm just gonna come straight down here, taking care to go over the pleats because sometimes it needs a little help on the back where you tug, pull it down. I get to the end, I'm gonna do a walking stitch to hold my stitch in place. And then I'm gonna pull my foot up, pull my needle out and then cut. So now we have, here we've got it all done. You can pull these pins out. Um, I do need to trim the initial starting thread down here, but other than that, I have a complete face mask that didn't really take us too long to do. Now for the filter pocket in the back, I have chosen to use vacuum filters. 
Um, they come in big boxes of filters, um, and I go ahead and just cut those up into squares that then fit into my pocket. So there's a lot of um, filters out there. What I did is I just took a basic vacuum filter and I cut strips of it here, and then I put those inside the mask. And I make sure I take the filters out before I wash it, and then I throw those filters away after some time. Um, or I do see people that, you know, it has a filter pocket. That doesn't mean you have to put anything in it. So some people choose not to. Um, but for basic fat face mask wearing, pleats down is the big thing. Nose guard at the top, pleats down. Your pleats are down so they don't catch germs. If your pleats were this way, then if someone was talking to you, you could actually catch their droplets inside these pouches and be carrying it around with you. Um, so pleats always down. Nose guard at the top, filter opening in the back, and there you go. A completed, um, we'll call this a level two face mask. So good luck and happy sewing.